thank you all each and every one for making the effort to come along. And I give most of all thanks to my Lord and Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, who saved me out of a, a ratchet place, delivered me and set me on high. It's my prayer this evening, and even before I start, Lord, that the cross is there, that at the moment I'm standing in front of it, but I just pray, Lord, you would hide me behind it. As I share with you about my life and where I am this evening. First of all, I'd say it's a privilege even to be over here speaking to us and for the warm welcome and I'd like to thank the pastor and the brethren who has invited us along here. I, I was born in Northern Ireland and as I'm sure as Joe's well documented, I grew up during the, the violence and the troubles. Uh, I was exposed to violence from a very young age. We were killed. Uh, my father was almost murdered one time coming across the Irish border. And uh, I was really a young boy at the time, like, but I can remember vaguely the, the, the vehicle that, in which they were travelling in. He, he had to stay behind at work that, that, that weekend, and uh, it was really by God's grace that he, he wasn't caught up in it. Three of his friends were, were cut to ribbons, cut to death, you know. Other friends too was, was killed, but that, that was just the nature of, of the conflict, you know. That went on until I, I left school, and it was pretty odds on that I was eventually going to end up in trouble. That's, just how it is. I have a family, I had a family of mother and a father, I, a sister and a brother. We're a small family, you know, and uh, as, as the years went on, I never really found it easy to hold down a steady job. I was always out drinking and taking drugs, and uh, like, like most of the youth do now, you know, these areas are familiar with that, sadly, you know. Uh, I decided with another friend that we would make a fresh start, go to Sunderland, you know, but Sure enough, Irish people, we go whenever it's at the head of the, the Depression or the recession in the early 90s. <laughs> there wasn't too much work, you know. At that time, I was caught up in street violence. As it, was. it was serious enough, like, but not as bad as it, as it was going to turn out to be, you know. But uh, eventually, as I said to the friend, we'll just we'll make a fresh start. We'll, we'll go over to, to Sunderland. He, he had family there, so we packed up and left. But we didn't, didn't say there was no work. We had to come back home again. Now, at that time, I had a brother. And uh, he was like a Dale Boy character to me, he was older, he was always good at making a few quid, you know, selling chores and pulling strokes as we called it back home. <laughs> and I, I really looked up to him, he was like a, like a father figure, and I wasn't that keen on working, <laughs> so he was always there to, to provide, you know. But anyway, he, done, he was involved in a, in a sport motorcycle racing, and it's like they have over here, we, we do it on roads, and it's extremely dangerous, you know. He had been doing this for about 12 years or so. And just before I go any further, there's a word of scripture that I want to read out, which brings me to that point. And it says in, in Proverbs 27, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. But anyway, I, I was helping a guy out. I was uh, claiming social security and working on the side. And that was on, on a Saturday. And at that time, I was just thinking, this is great. You know, as I thought of it, life was handy. And the next thing... Uh, I was ready for going out that, that evening, it was on a Saturday evening, to go partying as usual, taking drugs and drink. And I, I'll never forget it, I, I came home and as I, as I pulled up in front of where I live, my mother was standing at the front door and her, her eyes were red. And I knew right away what had happened. And I says to her, she didn't answer me for about five or ten minutes, you know. I says, don't be telling me anything's happened here, serious. But eventually it, it came out of her that he had come off on a practice lap, it's high speed racing. and. It, I thought he initially was dead, you know, but he, he wasn't. He was an intensive cure. They moved him on to a life support machine. But you know the saying is where there's life, there's hope. And, you know, I thought to myself, well, he's maybe going to pull through here. But as the week wore on, it didn't get any better. And my, my father and mother was down in the, in the hospital, and they were by his bedside. They had to put him through an emergency operation to, to relieve the pressure on the brain. And I was at home at this stage taking the telephone calls because it never quit, you know, it was so he was a popular guy. And anyway, my father was on the phone and he started crying, you know, when you're not used to hearing that sort of thing, you know, it broke me in bits. And he had said to me, go down and see a friend that we had, a family friend who, funny enough, was an ex-prison officer. And he was a great man of God and he was good at praying and stuff, you know. So I, I went down to, down to his house and I was in bits, I was wrecked, you know. And, Went down and you called him Jimmy. Told him, well, Jimmy knew what had happened. I asked him, would you start praying for the brother? He says, yeah, sure, come on up to the bedroom. And he started praying to the, to the Lord and stuff, you know. And it was at that point, I felt my whole life, you know, the burden of my sin, everything that was rotten and horrible. Now, yes, I know it was an emotional occasion, like, but, you know, when you meet, the, when you meet God, it's not in your terms. 
but it's a divine appointment, I believe. And uh, he prayed for him, and that's when I gave my, Lord, my, my life to the Lord. Well, unfortunately, the, the work went on, and he didn't make it. He, he died, he did, you know. Mm. And the next thing, uh, I can tell you here now, friends, when I seen that coffin coming down our driveway, it speaks more than a thousand sermons, you know. He was a guy that I looked up to, uh, the world of him, you know. And once he died, it left me in, in bits like. But because I grew up in a violent background, it was not long after that, I, you know, I was blaming God almost for not for not telling them, you know. But God's ways aren't our ways, you know. And he's went on to be in the glory now. I've since learned that he was going to meetings and things. And he had made a profession, you know. So thank God I'm going to go to meet him one day. And that's all that really counts. Because friends, we're only really passing through this life. We're only pilgrims. You know, it says in the book of James, I think it is, your life's only a vapour. But anyway, as the, the bitterness and the resentment set in, at that particular time in Northern Ireland, the, the poor military violence was really going into top gear. And where I lived, it was, it was quite easy to get involved with the, the local militias, as we would call them. And it was a guy that I knew was a friend of mine, and I, I knew was, he was involved. Like, so it was easy to see the right people. And from that moment on, if I thought my life had been bad beforehand, it was going to get a lot worse. And I joined, uh, as I said, I got involved with the groupings. Uh, I'm not going to all that there, just there was various activities and things, but eventually I got myself mixed up in ser serious trouble and found myself in, in, in the long cash, the maze prison. And uh, I knew it was going to go down for a long time. The guys that we were out with, the operation went completely wrong. They had forensics, everything on us. You know, you, you had no fight, and you know in yourself that you, you were going down on it. Like previously, you had been in and out, and they had nothing on you. You know, you just sat, you kept your mouth shut, and you walked out again. But this time they got us, you know, it was God, I believe, had brought it to a close. And as I said, I went, done a lengthy sentence then. And at that particular time, there was the, the, the start of a, of a feud that was beginning to develop in, in the groupings, as, as Joe, I think, explained earlier on. And I found myself mixed up in that. And from one minute I was, I was hero to, to zero. And whenever I was ready for coming out, I didn't even know what I was coming out to, you know, because I knew these men. And life was very cheap, like, you know, you could be taken out like that, you know, once you fell on the wrong side of them, like. But with God's help, I turned my life back over to Jesus again, and he provided the protection. He says in his word, there's no, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It was hard, like, you know, and as a matter of fact, I went into nearly isolation, like, but I believe God was doing that tunnel for a reason. And as the, as the years went by, he just kept your nose clean and just tried to walk with God, you know. And as, as, as time has wore on, the Lord has been good. You know, he has brought me into contact with, with Joe and with Paul there. And a lot of the guys that, that I was involved with have got saved, praise the Lord, you know. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, when I was going through my prison sentence, I can say this to anybody here now or any young ones, it doesn't pay. I, I know of about 20 individuals, 20 guys who, who have met violent deaths. And unfortunately, only one of them at the hands of an opposing faction. The rest of them were either through for arguments in themselves or untimely deaths, committing suicide and things, you know. It's a, it's a sad, sad business. The Northern Ireland Troubles is a sad business, folks. Mm -hmm. You know, I can stand, and it's not glamorised. You know, you see these films and things and they portray it as some noble cause. It's not, you know, there's, there's a noble cause there. That's worth dying for. You know, Jesus died for us, mm -hmm. you know. And as I said, like I just, I give God the honour and glory because there's a couple of times I was nearly taken out, out of the picture and I believe it was only for people praying. For me at home, my mother was been a Christian for, for years and the prayers of the saints have sustained me, you know, and, and definitely to that and to God be the glory. And I just, once again, I thank you for taking the time out to listen here and just pray that if there's anybody not saved here, you know, for them, make your call and election sure. As I thought one day I was going out to go partying, my life changed forever. That's why I read that scripture. Never forget it. One day you're normal, then the next thing, things change. Bless you and thank you all for listening. Amen.